Hello, Dave Consler again. Um, we're going to talk about senior trees and the trees that the uh, senior students will identify. By now, y'all are becoming re regular experts at this sort of thing, and so you know we don't need to necessarily go back to the fundamentals, so we'll run through these trees. If you want to review some of the fundamentals of tree identification, then the, the junior video would be great. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So American basswood. Uh, this tree sometimes looks a little bit like mulberry, but this uh, tree has a heart-shaped leaf uh, in general, and sometimes it's a little bit uneven on the, its base. So you can see that. Good size leaf. The American beech. The way I know this tree is I look at the veins. The veins that go out from the midrib to the edge are depressed and very distinctive. You see they're, they're very obvious, very distinct. Uh, sometimes there will be a twig at the end of American beech that's quite long and pointed but that might not be there depending on the time of year that you look at it. But those veins on that American beech are very distinctive. American hornbeam. We've got two trees that sometimes get confused here. American hornbeam is sometimes known as ironwood or musclewood. Really the easiest way to identify this tree is if you see it in real life and you see the bark of the tree because it looks like muscles. It looks like tendons or something like that in the bark of the tree. But Unfortunately, we don't have that, so what you're looking at is a leaf. It is an op, uh, is a alternate leaf, simple leaf. It has uh, uh, double serrations on the edges of it. It is a little bit smaller leaf than our next tree, and uh, generally speaking, the American hornbeam is going to be glabrous or smooth, and it's not going to have hairs or prebiescence on it to any great extent. On the other hand, the eastern hop hornbeam, what look, looks somewhat similar, has a bit bigger leaf, and I find that it oftentimes has a lot more pubescence, a lot more fuzziness to the bottom and top of the leaf. If you're fortunate to have the fruit there with you, it looks like a hop. So uh, ergo the name, hop hornbeam. So, uh, and the bark of this tree, if you see it in real life, is uh, thin strips, flat and, and real thin strips uh, coming off that tree, almost like a pecan bark. Black locust. We've got black locust and honey locust. And so the black locust has no thorns. It may have a small little pair of thorns at the base of the leaf, but generally speaking it's not loaded with thorns like our next tree, the honey locust. But it is a, uh, a compound leaf, uh, pinnately compound. You can see lots of leaflets there, nice little round leaflets. The honey locust on the other hand sometimes is bipinnately compound. In other words, not only do we have a compound leaf, but we have a compound leaf on top of a, a twig where we have lots of compoundness. And the honey locust, generally speaking, is going to be covered up with thorns. Be careful when you handle this specimen. We may actually put it in a bag or some way to protect you when, when you're looking at honey locust. Black gum has generally a nondescript kind of leaf, although the leaf is a bit wider towards the end of the leaf than the, at the base. And so it kind of has this oblong like look to it. Uh, oftentimes this tree will be one of the first to start making some red leaves in the fall. You'll see that uh, there may be a red leaf mixed in with the green leaves early on, uh, say July or, or August or maybe even June, that sort of thing. The fruit is uh, displayed there on the right hand picture. Brazilian pepper tree, this is a uh, in, invasive non-native tree that generally speaking is further south, uh, south Florida, central Florida, south Florida along the coast. Uh, I look at this tree and look at the leaves and you see a pretty distinct yellowy looking um, veins on the leaves coming out from the, the midrib right there and has that distinctive shape. You may have berries or fruits on it to look at it. Carolina willow, no tree is going to have as slender leaves as your Carolina willow. That's just very distinctive. Obvious this is a swamp tree, grows in wet areas, wet uh, swamps or ditches, uh, that sort of place and it has a really narrow, long, slender leaf. Eastern cottonwood has a pyramid or deltoid shaped leaf. You can see that the leaves here are pretty much kind of a triangle or pyramid type shape. That's real distinctive to eastern cottonwood. Good sized leaf might be two to five inches long. Florida maple looks a little bit like red maple except it has extra lobes. The red maple has three lobes whereas the Florida maple has at least five. It looks like the flag of Canada. So you see in this top leaf right here, that looks kind of like 
the flag of Canada. It has five lobes. Sometimes you'll hear red maple referred to as trident or three trident red maple. So there's a difference. Oftentimes the Florida maple has more of a green petiole leading down from the leaf to the twig. Silver maple, uh, the clue to this tree is in the name. The underside of the leaf is quite silvery. And uh, don't see too many of those growing around, but they may be on your contest. And uh, you can see that the lobes look a little bit uh, more elongated with the silver maple as well. Mockernut hickory. I, I love mockernut hickories. Um, great wood for smoking. Uh, great tree. Um, makes great nuts for the squirrels and other critters. The leaves of the hickories are going to be compound. And oftentimes the mockernut has at least seven, if not nine leaflets, as opposed to pignut, which has usually five. However, the big diagnostic feature with mockernut hickory is the leaves are pubescent. They're hairy. They're going to have fuzz on them. So you, you're allowed to pick this one up and feel that leaf. And it's like, yep, that's fuzzy. That's mockernut hickory as opposed to pignut hickory. And we're going to have uh, the hickories and the ashes can look similar because they have compound leaves. But the hickories are going to be alternating. And then the ashes are going to be opposite. So that would be the distinguishing characteristic between uh, the hickories and the ashes. Pond pine is the only pine that you have on the contest with real short needles, about two inches long. The bundles or fascicles in this don't follow the S's or the L type uh, distinguishing characteristics. We talked about before how that uh, if a pine starts with an L, it has three needles per bundle or per fascicle. If it starts with an S, it has two. If it starts with an S and L like slash pine, it has both twos and threes. The pond pine doesn't either, and the fascicles and the needles within the fascicles are all over the place. It might be two, three, four, or five. But anyway, it's the one with the short needles. Cool thing about pond pine is it will grow needles right out the bark of the tree. A big mature tree, nice size diameter, needles growing right out the bark of the tree on the trunk. And you would see that in real life if you're out there in the woods. Red buckeye, a compound leaf, palmately compound. Okay, So we're going to talk about generally five leaflets coming off uh, from a center point and coming out, very distinctive. Um, can't miss that one. Red mulberry, it generally has mittens. Uh, if it doesn't and you're confused whether it might be a mulberry or a basswood, feel for stiff hairs on top of the leaf. So on top of that leaf, there's going to be very stiff hairs, a few of them, and the bottom of the leaf will be um, a good number of hairs or pubescence. So that's your difference with your red mulberry. Red bay, uh, kind of a distinctive uh, average looking leaf, but it's quite thick, quite dark on top, lighter underneath. This tree um, is a relative of the tree that your mom uses and when, or dad when they're cooking and using a bay leaf. You could probably dry this leaf and use it in your um, Italian food if you wanted to, but it has a kind of a distinctive look like that. There's unfortunately an insect and a disease combination that are wiping out all the red bays. And so this is a very sad situation, especially considering red bay is a host for uh, some caterpillars and butterflies that really, really need that particular tree only. River birch, you notice this one because it also has kind of a triangular shape or delta, deltoid shaped leaf, but uh, it's not uh, even at the base there. And it has real distinctive veins. You can see those yellow veins there. Um, coming off the leaf has a real distinctive kind of a triangular shape. If you were able to see the bark, it's papery uh, like that there in the lower right picture. Sea grape, uh, this grows along the coast. Great big leaf, great big leathery leaf, uh, distinctive shape. Those are the beginnings of the grapes right there. And you, when those get ripe, you can eat them. They're actually pretty good. White oak and schumard oak. White oak is in the white oak family and schumard oak is in the red oak family. And white oak family, the leaves are going to are going to be rounded with no prickles on the ends. However, with a schumard oak and the red oaks, oftentimes there'll be a prickle at the end of those lobes. And so you see with the white oak, really rounded ro lobes. With a schumard oak, uh, more uh, less rounded, and there'll be a little prickle at the end of each one of those little lobes right there. So schumard oak and white oak, uh, both uh, good trees. Sugarberry. 
I look for that distinctive leaf shape. You can see in the upper right hand, there's kind of a lancelet shaped leaf. They tend to lay off the twig in a really flat plane. So you'll see uh, alternating simple leaves, but they take, they take their turns coming off in one plane coming off that twig. And, and they have that distinctive shape to the leaf like you see there in those pictures. White ash, we talked about the differences that you can use in your identification between the ashes and hickories. Ashes are one of the few opposite. So you're going to have a compound leaf that looks a little bit like a hickory leaf, but it's going to be opposite, as you see there in that uh, left-hand picture. So look at opposite for the ashes and alternating for the hickories with that compound kind of leaf. All righty, that takes care of your senior trees. I really enjoyed speaking with you all and, and helping you with this. Have a great time out there looking at trees and identify them. As you begin to know your trees, you're going to have a lot of fun out there in, in nature, seeing what you're looking at. It's like, I know that tree, and you can impress your folks or your friends. All right, Dave Concert sign off. Take care.